everybody! Today I'm going to be showing you a bunch of books that I really want to read, but you probably don't care about. More accurately, it's probably like books that aren't popular on booktube, maybe books you haven't heard of before. They're really niche, specific to me. <laughs> Things that really interest me, but maybe aren't super click worthy. Maybe I can't make a whole video about them. If I did, that video probably wouldn't get that many views, you know? And this is sort of a response to my last video where I talked about how sometimes um, ha being a reader in booktube can come with these self-imposed pressures. There's no one actually telling us you should read the popular books, but because everyone else seems to be, you kind of start to feel like, huh, maybe I should only be reading popular books. And it, it kind of makes you maybe, I don't know, you know, you are you, but it maybe um, makes you put down the kind of weird oddity books that you want to read. And so today I wanted to show you some of mine. I'm really excited to make this video and if you enjoy it or like the idea, please tell me <laughs> because when I was making, um, like when I was looking at my shelves and I was going through picking the books that I would mention in this video, I really quickly had a pile of 13 and I was like, that is too many, but if people like this, I'll do it again. So. Um, yes, without further ado, let's just jump into the pile. I'm really excited. Like, I literally, I have so many books here to pick from, but I'm just gonna pick a few. Okay, the first one. The Diary of Frida Kahlo. So I've made a joke um, in some of my videos before, and I think on Instagram as well, that all I want to do is read <laughs> biographies of Frida Kahlo now. That's like all I want to do. Um, I have another one over there, and I have one that I'm getting for Christmas, and I have this one. So this isn't actually a biography per se. It is, um, I'll show you, I can just show you. It is uh, a reproduce, a reproduction, yeah, of one of her journals, and it's so colorful, it's so beautiful, um, and it's so interesting. It also has essays at the beginning and at the end, which I'm really excited to read. Um, oh, I'll show you without the cover. Super beautiful. So obviously Frida Kahlo was a painter and an artist and her journal really reflects that. Like the fact that there is so much art in it. She like doesn't write with a pen. She apparently loves writing with markers, which I think is amazing. Um, yeah, and it's also, it's in Spanish. So I speak Spanish. Spanish was actually my first language, if you didn't know. Um, so, but if you don't speak Spanish and you're interested or read Spanish and you're interested in, um, reading this book, the back is full, like a big section of it, probably a third of it, is the English translation. So you can flip through it and then just read page by page in English. But yes, I've just really been enjoying learning more about Frida Kahlo. I find her really super interesting. I didn't like, I, so some people like Frida Kahlo are so famous that you feel like, yeah, I know who Frida Kahlo is, but do you actually know, like, do you know anything about her life when she was born? Like, um, what she went through, what her art is actually like? Cause I realized, I was like, one day I was like, I don't actually know much about her. Who was she? And I looked into her and I learned so many interesting things. Like the fact that she died relatively young because she actually had a lot of illness throughout her life. The fact that she's mixed race. She is like such a Mexican icon, but her dad was white German. Like she was half Mexican, right? So that's super interesting. So. Yeah, I'm really excited to read her diary. I think that's gonna be really cool insight into, because she didn't she didn't write an autobiography. So this is in a way, um, there's also an interesting controversy though there. Um, I haven't actually heard anyone talk about this controversy. I invented it in my head, I suppose, but this is kind of a common-ish thing to do, to publish people's journals and diaries. And it's kind of like, should we be doing that? because they definitely didn't want us to. Does it matter? Because they're dead. Like, they, they, we can't hurt their feelings now. But at the same time, maybe they specifically didn't want us to because they thought it would affect the way we look at their art and their actual legacy. So it is really interesting. Um, okay, so in a similar vein, a book I really want to read is Grapefruit by Yoko Ono, another one of my new heroes. This year, I've just, <laughs> just made a bunch of heroes, Frida Kahlo and um, Yoko Ono, Pals Forever. So Yoko Ono is a super interesting character. My whole 
like childhood, I thought Yoko Ono was a villain because she tore apart the Beatles, right? That's the legend, that's the myth of Yoko Ono, the person who tore apart the Beatles. And she, her name is often used in that way, where it's like, um, if you're tr if you're kind of ruining something, a lot of people will be like, well, stop being a Yoko Ono. And it's like, that's, that's how I thought of her. And then just recently, like, I took a course on modern art in America and learned a bit about Yoko Ono. Then I kind of was interested in her as an artist, as opposed to just someone who had something to do with the Beatles. And then recently I found out about this book that she did um, with, an, with an introduction by John Lennon, which is cool. Um, yeah, and it's, it's hard to describe what these are. She basically has these little instructions. That's what they're like called, instructions. And she tells you what to do. And you can imagine these instructions would have been printed on a piece of paper and hung in a gallery or in an art show or any sort of an art situation. And you would read the instruction and the idea is that you can imagine yourself doing it, you can imagine someone else doing it, or you can actually do it. It's in a way conceptual art. Um, but they're super interesting because like some of them are like scream as loud as you can and you can imagine some people would just imagine what that'd be like, but some people might actually do that. <laughs> they're really cool but because they also work as poems in a way. So I'm really excited to read that. Let's read, okay, here's a random one. Underground Overground by Andrew Martin. So this is a nonfiction book about the tube in London. So I love the tube. <laughs> I love it. It's an underground train system in England, in London. And really interestingly, like one of the facts on the back of the book itself is that the London Underground, which is, is actually 55% overground. So like already I am like feel like I'm learning loads. I just find it a super interesting and integral part of London, which I spend a lot of time in London. I'm actually going there on Sunday and I've lived there for a few months at a time, like never for like a year, but for months at a time I live there. And I, I love London, but I find the tube so fascinating. And so when I saw this book, I got so excited to just learn more about the tube. There's a lot of literature on the tube. Like it is a, uh, um, a commonly written about subject, but this just seems kind of anecdotal. It's about a guy who also really loves the tube and just tells you about it and does history of it. So yeah, I think that'll be really cool. Okay, which one shall I pick next? I, I honestly have so many books in front of me. I don't know where to go. Okay, let's do this one. Why Poetry by Matthew Zapruder, I think. So this is my most recent recent purchase. This is the book I just bought recently. Um, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, as I've mentioned, I'm doing my master's. And as I think I've mentioned, I need to make a giant final project at the end of it. Now, most people do a giant essay because it's an English degree and that's the normal thing to do a dissertation, a thesis. Um, but I don't want to do a, an essay because I'm sick of essays. I believe that the world has enough. So I want to do a documentary and I've kind of had to jump through some obstacles, but the department is letting me do a documentary. So I'm so excited about it. And the topic, I don't want to give too much away because I will be putting it on YouTube when I finish. This is the exciting thing. Oh, let me just sidetrack for a second. The reason that I'm really excited to make a documentary is because that is what I want my career to be. In my head, <laughs> I envisage my future as an author and a video maker. Those are the two paths I want to go down. So I'm gonna make this documentary. And I, again, like I mentioned, I don't wanna to give too much away because I am planning to like, hopefully try and get it in some festivals. And then eventually though, I will put it on YouTube, which I think is really cool. Like, this is where I am, this is what I do. So I want to share the work that I make with you guys. Um, and so without spoiling too much, because who knows how the project will evolve, etc., it is about poetry and the internet. And so this book, it just, I walked into a bookshop and it just stared out at me and I was like, it's perfect. <laughs> Why poetry? Um, and the first, like the kind of 
blurby thing just says an impassioned call for a return to reading poetry and an incisive argument for its accessibility to all readers. It's basically about why we make poetry and why we should all read poetry and a big driving force because I've read the introduction uh, a big driving force behind it is basically this idea that we need to chuck out just throw out the window the ways we've been taught to think about poetry in school because that is not what poetry is and when people think about poetry they think about school they think about the war poems they had to read or they think about like the national poems we all have to read and dissecting them and trying to find symbolism and that's fun like as an English major I love that but I also know two things one that is not why poets write literature like Poets don't write poems so that they'll be in school. They write them so that people will read them and feel emotional. And secondly, as a poet myself, I'm like super upset that people think of, often think of, not everyone all the time, but often think of poetry as something inaccessible, something you have to have a degree to understand. So that's what this book is about. I also think that it's beautiful, like super bold, kind of like a manifesto of sorts. And I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, let's do another biography, shall we? Um, <laughs> there's this, this is so huge. George Orwell, A Life by Bernard Crick. I don't know if you know, guys, but I love George Orwell. He's clearly my favorite author. I talk about him all the time. I have three copies of Animal Farm. That was an accident, by the way. I really love George Orwell. Um, and I feel like I don't know that much about his life. I, I know some, some stuff because I have read a lot of his essays. I like know where he was born and I know that he served in the military and I know the time period and when she was working and that he died pretty young, like in his forties. Um, but I just want to know like more. And I found this in a used bookshop. I think that's why it has this kind of plasticky thing that's kind of like a library. Uh, cover, you know how they put that on library covers to protect them? I think this is a similar thing. But it was ten dollars for the- and it's in really good condition. But it looks like- it looks like an old-timey book. It's really beautiful and it has, um, photographs in it and just tells the, like, pretty deep story of his life. And so I bought it and then I went and looked it up. Um, oh! Also, red pages. <laughs> um, I went and looked it up and it's a pretty respected, like it's kind of like the biography of George Orwell right now. So yeah, on the back it has photos too of George Orwell. Um, which scene? There is a baby. I would say a hideous baby. <laughs> Alright, let's do another one. I really want to read Flanus <laughs> by Lauren Elkin. This may be the randomest book that I could mention because it is literally about women walking. That's it. It's about women walking. And I'm like, yup, need to buy that book. <laughs> um, so it basically just talks about these cities, I think four cities, New York, Paris, Tokyo, and London, and women that take walks in those cities. What they see, what they feel. I read a book earlier this year. Where is it? It's right here. Um, let me just, let me just grab it as a visual aid. Um, Bird, so Birds Art, Life, Death by Keo McClear. I really loved it. Oh, this is a perfect opportunity for a plug. I did a podcast episode about this. If you haven't checked out my podcast, link below. Um, but this book was like super meditative, calm, introspective, nonfiction that just made you think, just made you ponder life. And I think that's what this will be. I think it's just gonna make me like, walk around these cities. I really love travel. Have I been to- I haven't been to Tokyo, but I've been to New York, Paris, and London. So I can- I can just imagine myself reading this and thinking about the places I've seen. You know what I mean? I think it's gonna be cool. I might be a crazy person though. Um, let's do one more? This <laughs> is such a random video. I don't know if I should like drag it out and I'm just boring you all to death. Um, I'll just do one more. Okay. Scratch. Writers, Money, and the Art of Making a Living. Edited by Manjula Martin, but it's um, a collection of essays by a lot of different authors, including Cheryl Strait, who wrote Wild, Roxane Gay, who wrote Bad Feminist, um, Jonathan Franzen, lots of other people, Austin Kleon, who I really like. Um, 
So this is basically talking about money in the world of writing. The fact that writers often have to have other jobs, the fact that um, unless you're like really selling a lot of copies of your book, you'll probably have to do like lots of side writing things. I have read part of it. Can you see that? Like a quarter of it? And I was enjoying it. I just had to put it down because of whatever. I don't remember what it was. Um, but it, it's just like interviews with all of these different authors and their relationship with money and their art. And I think it's really interesting because I, I don't know, there's, there's often this idea that like you should only be making art for the sake of art. Uh, and in a pure world, yeah, I agree. But we don't live in a pure world, you know? We live in a world where you need money to eat. So if you want to make art as you're living, you need to figure out a way to make money through it. So I think it's really interesting to hear from all of these really big authors um, how they make money through their writing and what kind of trials and tribulations they've had to go through. So I think this is cool. I also really like the cover. Super simple and pretty. So this is my pile of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books that I really want to read that you probably don't care about. But maybe I have convinced you that one of these would be cool. I will link them all down below. Definitely check them out if you want them. Um, and again, if you like this, tell me because there's a pile of books here that I could still talk about so I would make a part two if you enjoyed it. All right, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.